All right. It is big microphone time. Because season two of Orbit is wrapped up and I think it went pretty, pretty well. So thanks to all of you for watching and subscribing. Thank you. And now I've been getting a lot more messages asking, how do you become a content creator? What's the best way to start a YouTube channel? And I'm always surprised to hear how much old advice is out there that I think is simply pointless. So today we'll look at five of the most common pieces of advice that I think are useless and some alternatives to that. Let's get into it. Can we just stop chasing big numbers? Everywhere you look, there's somebody telling you how to grow big, grow fast, hit milestones and make boatloads of money. But I really don't see anybody talking about having fun along the way and building systems that work for you. Because I believe systems are way more important than having big goals. So I would suggest to you, make a handful of videos, three, four, five, see if it's still fun, look at what works and what doesn't, and keep track of every little step along the way to build a system around that, to make it easier for you to make more videos. Once you have that in place, and once you're able to see your impact, then we can talk about building a large media empire. And to make a point, I've been sharing this channel with a bunch of creators even before it hit a thousand subscribers. And the response has always been, wow, this looks so good. Even with some videos having barely a hundred views. So I think that really goes to show that numbers are not all that important. All they see is a cool channel they want to engage with. Make a video every week for two years and your life will change. Unfortunately, I've heard that sentence way more often than I care to because I think it's complete nonsense. Like if you go sit in the forest every week for two years, your life will change. If you do anything for two years, your life will change. And in fact, if you do nothing every week for two years, your life will change. So yes, that sentence is true, but it's complete nonsense. In contrast, I've seen so many channels out there that do that. They publish a video every week for years, but show no sign of progress. Not in their personal life, no progress on the channel, and no evolution in the content. They kind of just make the same video over and over again. So unless you take time to reflect and make some kind of direction for yourself, just publishing is not going to get you anywhere. So instead, I would look at how making videos fits into your schedule. Can you make videos every week? Do you want to make videos every week? Is it monthly? Is it daily? I think all of that can lead to success. Maybe you have to change your schedule. Maybe the videos have to change. I would just pay really close attention. What is enjoyable to you? That is why I chose early on to create in seasons, right? I have intense periods of time, three, four months where I make the best videos I can. And then there are stretches of time where I don't care so much about publishing a video every week because I rather put out something that I'm proud of, that is helpful to people than to just release a video because it's Thursday. Picking a niche is probably the most common advice that you've heard if you want to grow or find any kind of success on YouTube. But to me, that sounds like, hey, look at this wall of instruments that you've never touched and now pick one. That is how you will find success. Actually, why don't you just play one string on this instrument and never really change the note? I don't know about you, but that does not resonate with me. And I think it comes down much more to experimentation. Or to put it in fancy quotes, you only know what you make. As you experiment, you will find something that feels easy, that you look forward to making. And it's also how all the big tech startups operate. You build, test, get feedback and repeat. So instead of picking a niche, I would think about two things. What is it that you are really excited about? What do you know more about than most? That's your zone of genius. And who are the people you want to connect with? Who can you help? Who are the ones you want to reach? 
that's your audience. If you can find the intersection between the two of that, you never have to worry about niche ever again or what video to make next. So for example, you could say I'm in the creator education niche, and that's true, but let's look at it in a different way. I've been studying YouTube for the past three years and looking at ways how to grow sustainably. And I'm always excited to sit down with a fellow creator who's trying to forge their own path. So let's say I'm helping solo creators take the next step and grow sustainably. To me, that makes a lot more sense than saying he's a creator educator. In that spirit, I hope this video is helpful to you. And if it is, please leave a comment down below. Now that every platform is so video focused, it is tempting to put everything everywhere all at once. And don't forget to make 347 pieces of content out of your one video, right? Instead, I like to think about the purpose of each platform. Why are you there and what are you trying to get out of it? One thing that I find kind of weird is if you discover somebody new, they ask you to subscribe to all the different channels and it's the same everywhere, but different. Like, what's the point? I think each platform has a different value when it comes to distribution and building relationships. So on the one end, you have TikTok that is great at showing your content to the most people possible, but it's not very good at building relationships. And on the other hand, you have newsletters and podcasts that are not really good at being discovered, at being shown to people you don't know, but it's really good at deepening a relationship with the people that do engage. And for me, YouTube is somewhere in the middle. It kind of strikes a good balance between all of them. And that's why it's my home base. What's important to me is not just to repost everything, but to put it in context. For example, I've been more active on LinkedIn again, and I do post about the videos there, but I always add an element that is relevant to that audience. And that's how I like to think about platforms and discovery. One more thing I hear way too often is that you should hire an editor as soon as possible. And that makes a lot of sense on the surface and ties in with a lot of the business books, right? You want to work on the business, not in the business. But the way I think about it is a lesson from film school. A movie gets made three times when it's written, on set and in the edit. So yeah, you can hire somebody out to do the menial task of editing. But that's the final stage where your video comes together. And a good edit can make or break your story. So yeah, it's definitely a hard skill to acquire, or at least it takes a lot of time to become good at editing. But it's also the stage that really defines what your channel feels like. So if you want to build a streamlined media company, it definitely makes sense to hire an editor. But on the other hand, there are so many great content creators out there who do everything themselves or in very small teams. And they're just as successful as the big ones. And to me, it's a lesson learned from Macaroon that really sticks around, that once you hire people, you're responsible for them, that they have something to do, that you pay them, and it cuts down on your flexibility, which to me is one of the most valuable things. So those are the five pieces of advice I hear over and over again that I think should really go away. Let me know if this resonates with you. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know. And if this was helpful to you, definitely subscribe. And you might want to check out the Orbit newsletter, where I share frameworks every week that help you make that help you become a better creator.